<laughs> hey, how are we? We're a bit random. We're just going to go live to air with pretty pretty much no one out there. Oh, hello. Hello. We've got seven, five viewers, something or other. Um, but we had a blackout before, didn't we? Well, we are working. I can hear it on the mobile phone. Man, I need, I need to uh, check myself because I know there's not many people out there. If you are out there, say hello. Um, we'll get started in a minute. We're just going to do a little bit of a speed Lightroom edit, just a quick run through Lightroom, nothing too flash. Just replace that earlier video that I got about halfway through with something else. See if anyone's out there. And then we'll get started. Oh, hello, Steph's back. <laughs> Karen's back, we're back. Okay guys, this is a little show, a little intimate show. Got me casuals on, I got my light collective, the light collective hoodie on. Um, all right, let's go and move some things around just quickly here and then we'll do a little bit of, we will do a little bit of Lightroom. Move that over there so I can see if you guys are chatting away. Feel free to ask some questions. I'll put that, where am I gonna put that? I'll put that there. One second, let me just get this organized. And uh, good timing, Steph. How's your day been? I went for a walk, had some lunch. It was great while the blackout was on. Uh, here we go, what's it doing over here? I lost my uh, streaming thing. There it is. All right, that's good. Let's switch scenes here, guys, and we'll do some Lightroom. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, guys, let's start again. I was a bit dithering and, and uh, losing my way before anyway, wasn't I? Ignacio ringing me. I'll ring him back. Iggy, I'm on live YouTube, mate. Come on. Um, okay, <laughs> here we go. Let's do, let, I'm, just, I'm just going to run through. We're not going to dither around too much. We're just going to run through. Oh, what, Sandering, what, San, Sandy, sorry, wondering, can't stay, but was wondering what was happening. Ah, blackout. Yeah, we had a blackout. The power was down for about an hour and a half here, and um, there was nothing I could do about it, unfortunately. Kind of, uh, anyway, let's do it. Here we go. This is the uh, raw file, and we're going to try and produce something like this, okay? And this is the power of Lightroom. Most of you will know that I'm more of a Photoshop kind of guy, but Lightroom is a really, really powerful processor, and, um, and it, a really great standalone. You don't always need Photoshop, but when you do need Photoshop, you really need Photoshop. There's certain things that Lightroom can't do that Photoshop can do. Certain blendings, you know, replacing skies. Um, Photoshop is far superior in sharpening and print finishing, in my opinion. Um, all the creative filters like blurring and those kind of things are only available in Photoshop at this point. There's a whole bunch of things. There's a list a mile long of things that Photoshop can do. But one thing Lightroom can do really well is fast draft editing. If you've got an image like this that doesn't really need, you know, too much moving stuff or pixel manipulation and just needs a bit of boost in light, color, contrast, then Lightroom does an incredible job. Back on, Gary. We're back. We're building. It's no stress. It's great. I don't. I don't have to, uh, you know, worry about a hundred or two hundred people watching along. It's just a little little uh, group in my studio here, which is fantastic. Okay, let's do a little bit of an edit, guys. Feel free to ask me some questions as I go. I don't have the questions on this screen. They're over on that screen over there, but I'll I'll see them pop up as they come along. Now, essentially, I mentioned this in the last video before we got cut off. And that is when I'm developing in Lightroom, and look, I, I do it reasonably regularly, particularly to see if an image has got potential. I might do a draft in Lightroom and then shoot it over to Photoshop to do the finishing touches or even re-edit it in Photoshop if I feel um, it's worthy. So I click on the develop, import the images obviously, click on the develop module, and then I just work from the top down through the basic panel. I won't touch the tint sliders just yet, we'll do that later, but with this particular image, you can see the histogram, you know, it's, it's pretty well exposed for the highlights. There's a little room there, so we could probably just push that up a little bit, the exposure. I generally knock the highlights down a fraction, and in this case, well, look, when we're editing, whether it be Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity, uh, Capture One, or whatever else you can think of, the, the formula stays much the same. We're trying, we're going to add more light, 
more color, more contrast to the important sections that will really make them pop and stand out. And we'll do the opposite to the not so important sections. We might darken them, we might desaturate them and reduce the contrast. And, and you know, if you've done my easy way photography, you'll know that's something that we do quite a lot. What are the important sections of, of this image? The boat, the jetty, and the sky more than likely. So do we think that the boat has got enough light on it? No, I don't think so. So let's grab this shadow slider here and you'll see we'll be able to really pop up those shadows. And it's rare that I push it that hard, but in this case, you know, I wasn't shooting with a, you know, a graduated filter or anything like that. So the digital cameras these days are incredible at shadow recovery. So there's no problem with pushing that pretty aggressively. We'll do that. Uh, you know, we could maybe just pop those a uh, little bit on the whites. Maybe lift those blacks a little bit. Lift them up a little bit. We'll leave clarity, vibrance, and saturation for now. We'll leave it for now. I was just checking if you guys were still there. I think you're still there. Not so many comments. This is only a couple of us, a handful of us. Okay, now what I'm going to do before I move down and have a play with the tone curve and the HSL and split toning, which is incredible. It's a lot of fun. In fact, that's the main reason why I wanted to do this Lightroom video was because of those fun techniques down there. We can add a lot of mood and a lot of atmosphere. But before we do that, I want to use the gradient and the radial filters for specifically picking up some of the areas in this image. So what I want to do first is lift this boat up a bit, give it a little bit more light. The radial filter will do a great job of that. That's that round icon there. And if we come on screen, click and hold and drag, we get an ellipse like that. I'm going to place it over the boat and then I'll have a play with much those same sliders again. We might Oh, lift up a little exposure. We could pop the highlights down a little bit, which will control the water a little bit. Stop the water getting too bright. Lift those shadows up a little. What else do we need to do? We could, no, we won't add clarity. I don't want to go too far just yet. That, maybe a fraction of saturation, that'll probably do. We can close that one down. Okay, if we open that up, you'll actually be able to see. Will we be able to see before and after? If I click on that, we will. Before, after, just a little bit more light. Oh, g'day, Adrian. You just bought the Easy Way Photography course. Good on you, mate. Thanks for signing up and supporting what I do. You'll get all my email information and all that. Make sure you email me if you've got any questions or need any help. Still there. Good on you guys. Okay. Let's now grab the graduated filter. <laughs> That's okay, Steph, no dramas. Let's go with the graduated filter, this little rectangle one in the center here. And if you're wondering, if you don't have Lightroom but you've got Photoshop, then Adobe Camera Raw is essentially the same as Lightroom too. So you can open your RAW file straight into Adobe Camera Raw, play around with these settings and then move over to Photoshop after if you like. Um, graduated filter, click on that one. Now with the graduated filter, we click and drag like this. And actually, let's, let's do a little example here. Let's turn that up really aggressively. And what you'll notice is if we push those two um, control points together, we get a really hard-edged graduated filter, if you like. Okay, but if I stretch them out, we get a really soft-edged filter. Now, I don't want to push it that far, do I? In fact, I, maybe I, we'll darken it down a little bit, just like that. Get some drama into the top of those clouds, maybe. That looks good. Let's click new. We'll grab a new one. We'll do the same from the bottom. Click and drag from the bottom up. But on the bottom, I don't think I want to darken. No. In fact, we could lighten a little bit. Lighten a little. We could add a little bit of, a little bit of warmth. Yeah, that works. What else could we do? We could maybe add a little bit of clarity. Yep. Clarity will give it a little bit of the details, a bit of punch and pop which will make that boat stand out. You probably don't want to add clarity. Well, it's up to you. If you love clarity, add it to the whole image. I tend to like to add it more selectively like this. Uh, maybe some contrast. Yeah. It's looking pretty nice. Okay, that's good. Next step, I want to add a little bit of color. Let's add a little bit of color. 
Uh, we'll close that down, close the graduated. The, the first way I'm going to add color is mess around with the overall color temperature. And if I just pump that up a little, just a little, not over the top. We don't want to go too far. Maybe a little bit of pinkish magenta too. That's looking nice. Okay. Okay. What's next? I feel like we can work on getting a bit more life and vibrance into this area on the horizon. We'll do that with the graduated. No, we won't. We'll do it with the radial tool. Radial filter tool, is that what it's called? Click and drag that out. Move that over and you can see, look, you can adjust these, adjust these, okay? You can adjust the feather and whatnot down here too. Now, what are we going to do right on the horizon? A little bit more light. Yeah, what about, we could take a little contrast out of there. A little bit more, a little bit more glow. That's getting a little too hot there. We might fix that up by itself. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Before, after, yeah, nice little sun glow coming through there. Du, 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 just looking what else we might want to do. For now, that will be okay. Close that one down. Now, this one here is a little bit too orange. So what I can do is grab that same tool again. I could have just pressed new, in fact. That section there is a little bit too yellowy orange. So we could either desaturate, Oh, that's too much. Or just maybe add some blue. Just me adding some blue into that region really calmed it down. That looks nice. All right, we're getting there. Let's see if we can pop that boat up a little bit more. Hey, Margaret, how are you doing? We're getting some of the, oh, Gary's back. Working through the easy way course as well. Never use layers so much. Awesome. Layers are really going to unlock your um, creative ability uh, to process in whatever style you like, really. Um, okay, that's looking nice. Let's go new and I'll put another radial filter. You can just keep adding radial filters, radial filters, radial filters. The thing that gets a little confusing with Photoshop sometimes is um, oh, I mean, sorry, with Lightroom sometimes, is Photoshop, you get all your adjustments in these nice stacked layers. And to a certain degree, like you can see the history, if I open that up, I can see the history over here. But it can be a little confusing as to which is affecting which area. So often you better just keep adding. You know, if you want to take away some color, then maybe just add another filter and take away the color rather than trying to um, fix up what you've already done. Okay. Have you... What am I thinking? I'm thinking, flip those shadows up more again. Highlights, yeah, they're fine. Little bit of contrast, see that boat? Look at that, you know, less contrast, a little bit more, really giving that foreground some presence. Looking good. Steph's got a question, hang on a second. If you keep putting layer filters one on top of the other areas, does it add to what's underneath? No, it adds, it keeps adding. So much like Photoshop in that manner, it'll, it just keeps adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up. It's like baking a cake. Oh, it's not sweet enough, a little bit more sugar. Oh, it's, uh, you know, that kind of thing. A um, little bit more ingredients, this or that. It's the same thing here. Unless you go and undo what you've done previously, they just stay there and keep adding up. That's looking pretty good. Shadows, we might contrast. We don't want to add too much light to the boat because the, the, the light is coming from the background. That looks great. Okay, I think that's a nice base, a good setup. Now let's have some fun. The tone curve, look, the tone curve, if you're a Photoshop user, as most of you are through um, my Photoshop courses, is just like curves. You know, a couple of points will add a great deal of contrast like that. Um, the only, th the thing that, I guess the thing that kind of is a slight disadvantage in Lightroom is curves are really, really powerful with their ability to put points wherever you like and really mess around with different looks. Okay, but at this point, we don't have the option to brush in, itchy nose, excuse me, or mask in 
any of these curves adjustments. So they're all global. You know, so we might, we might, look, I like, you get a bit of, oh, hello, you get a bit of a nostalgic look by just lifting up the black point a little bit. Oh, where are you? Come on. Why won't you lift? Is it not going to let me lift that black point? Maybe it's not. Come on. Is that it there? No. Oh, I'm sure I could lift. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see. Right. Why aren't you? Hello. <laughs> Lift up. Ah, oh, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, why are you being so painful? Again, give that mouse a shake. I have to come back to that. That's not working whatsoever. Come on, technology today, guys, hey? All right, let's come back to that in a minute. I, oh, hang on. Hey, but, oh, why won't you stay there? I can get that white point down. There, we got it. Yeah, good point, Tony. Hot spot. I just wanted to um, do that. Yeah, let's remove that hot spot. I agree. We'll do that with the clone tool. Click on that clone tool. Make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that's not great. What about that section right there? Oops, I didn't want to do that. Oh, come on. I'm having trouble with Lightroom, aren't I? That's what I wanted to do. We got there. We got there. Hot spot removed. Okay, close that down. Struggle street. Perfect. We could also remove the bird. I quite like the bird. We'll leave it there. Okay, moving on down. We'll leave the HS cell panel, although it's a bit of fun. You can have a bit of a play around with it yourself. But if you wanted to, for example, see how we've got hue, saturation, luminance. If you wanted to change the hue of the reds there, would it be... See how we can make them orange or, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's make them a little bit more hot pink. Yeah, we could do that. We could change the hue of the yellows in the background. Yeah, that little peachy color looks nice, doesn't it? Play with that. And you can also play with the saturation levels and, <laughs> thanks Tony, and the uh, luminance and the luminance, so the brightness. So if I click on luminance there, you can see I can make that red a bit brighter or a bit darker, yeah, whatever looks good, or, you know, the yellows in the background, no, not so much, yeah, we could pull them back like that a little bit, looking nice, that's looking good. The one I really love though for giving mood and detail, it's a little bit like, a little bit like the solid color layer in Photoshop, and I love that for adding mood, it's split toning here, so if we want to add, let's add some warmth to the highlights, Okay, we can add warmth to the highlights, yeah, like that, and then what colour should we add to the shadows, magenta purplish? Do I tend to ignore the warning reds? Mm, sometimes, yeah, I'm not too fussed about it, I mean I can see, that's telling me that it's colour clipping, and colour clipping is not usually that big a deal and we can deal with it in Photoshop. It's not actually blown out bright highlights. It's just telling me that the color, the color has gotten to the end of its scale really. Um, that's fine. And you could leave those on but I can see with my eye that it's fine. Um, colors, okay. Magentary purple maybe in the shadows. Oh, okay, we'll play around with that color. What color are we going to use? Yeah, no, that was quite nice. I want more of a orangish. It's very different. It's quite different from the other one. 
this one here, isn't it? I really went to town on that one. This one's a much more softer version at the moment. That looks nice. Okay, okay, let's stick with that for the time being. Let's stick with that. I think we could maybe darken or vignette the image. And we'll do that with a radial filter again. The ra yeah, the radial. This time we'll create a big circle like this. And we will click the invert mask. So it's going to apply what we're going to do to the outside, not the inside. That's quite nice, we'll drag that down a little bit. Okay, click the new button, new. And what do we want to do this boat? Maybe a little bit, I'm thinking drop the highlights, drag up the exposure a fraction. You can see it's starting to make that point behind the boat quite warm and I don't really want that. What we can do though, we can grab our brush Make that brush a little bit smaller and we can in fact click on erase paint away that back bit there yep that's looking pretty good what else might we do I think we're getting pretty we are we're getting pretty close there's not a lot more that I really want to do with that. What do you guys think? I can't remember what before and after is, but that was basically the before shot there. After, it's quite nice, it's quite nice. Let's go back to the main panel. Um, we probably don't need, we could probably add a little contrast. Let's see if we warm it up a fraction. Maybe we could cool down this section a little bit. No, that looks really nice. Just playing around. Jump in there with a raw file, have a play around. Oh, you can mess around with the balance too as well. So do we want more of those purples into the highlights or more of the oranges? Sorry. More purples into the highlights or more oranges into the shadows? That's looking quite nice. The clouds above. Tony, oh sorry, hotspot. Oh, that's an old one. Where did I read that from? Oh no, that was the hot spot. Yeah, we got that, didn't we? Yeah, it's getting there. This is quite nice. Let's just have a little bit more. What if I add a little bit more magenta? A little bit more of that pinky color. What if we come down to the tone curve here? Just have a play. No. Yeah, we could go that way. I do like to have this black point. You know, it's quite, maybe not like that. Maybe not like that. It's quite a modern, I get, a modern style to move that black point up and have soft blacks because it gives that beautiful nostalgic kind of feel to it. No, that one can stay where it is. Overall, maybe a little bit brighter. What if we move the contrast down? No, I don't like it. And that's what it's all about. Just move it and see if it's better or worse. It's pretty good. Magenta is my password. Purple, purple magenta. All right, what else can we do? Let's, um, let's maybe add a stronger vignette and just call it a day, I think. That's probably... What can we do here? We can put that in there. What if we cool down the outsides a little bit? Whoops, that's cooling down the insides. Invert that. Uh, 
and darken it too. And new. One more in the middle. Maybe we could add a little yellow there. A little bit more subtle. We actually took some yellow out. And look, I could play with this for days and, and uh, probably go between, you know, better and worse. I think that's pretty good. Let's have a look. That was before. That was after. Takes a while to sort of render up. Come on, there you go. And that was the one I did the other day. What did we do to that one? Oh, that's a, well, I messed around with that one in Photoshop, actually. Okay, so we got a little bit more drama in the sky, probably from Photoshop. And I went to pretty much to town on that section, didn't I? But this one's much softer, softer version. All right. Uh, Steph, do I invert the effects? No, you invert them. So if I was to, for example, click on the radial filter and let's add one more while we're at it. And I wanted the effect inside the radial filter. Sorry, looking at the wrong camera. Wanted the effect inside. It's by default, the invert mask is checked. So it will just go inside the filter. So let's just, you know, we add a little bit more light there maybe. And a, what else could we do? Drop the contrast down, add a bit of magenta something like that. But if we wanted to do the opposite, click new, and wanted the effect on the outside of the filter, or the outside of the mask, if you like, you click the invert button down here, where it says feather, and we can, really, go to town. That's a bit much, do you think? Just like that. Just like that. All right. Guys, funny day. We had the blackout. Bit of Lightroom. Lightroom's, um, it's, I mean, I'm a, I, what am I trying to say? Lightroom is not my natural editing platform, but I am doing a lot, lot more in Lightroom and there's a lot of benefits here. There's a lot of benefits. I do enjoy the split toning. Of course, you can do split toning in Photoshop as well. In fact, you can do everything in Lightroom. Everything that you can do in Lightroom is possible to replicate in Photoshop, but Lightroom is a little bit more natural, a little bit more visual, as in the sliders, you get to see what they're doing straight away, and um, you just ask yourself, do I like that or not? And just keep playing around, play around with the split toning, um, play around with the HSL, you've also got the black and white filters here, you can mess around with those. Um, you've also got the color filters here, that won't do much on the green, but if I switch to orange, you can see we can mess around with those. It's another way of basically doing exactly the same of what's in here, to be honest. Um, and then you've got the tone curve, which is quite nice. Clarity. But generally, we could soften this image a little bit, couldn't we? Just like that. Ah, very nice. All right, guys, a little quick one just to replace the video that should have been there before. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we've got an incredible photographer coming to join us. William Patino is coming to join us on Tuesday. So absolutely come and tune in for that one Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.